Back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. And we have a very, very disturbing story coming up here about a young girl who is tasered by the police. Now, I don't know if you've seen the recent previews for the movie that's coming out in August, Elysium. But the beginning of that trailer tape, there's a very disturbing scene which is becoming more and more like the operating principle for our police in this country. And that scene... The uh, star of the film, Matt Damon, is asked by a robotic cop something about what he's got in his bag or some kind of a question. And he kind of gives a little bit of a comedic, sarcastic answer. And the robot police just beat him to a pulp, basically. And uh, that's what we're starting to see right now in the United States. Because what's happening is, no matter what the police do, they're simply given some kind of an administrative leave. Maybe an unpaid, or maybe it's a paid leave, where they're taken off of their duty, they get a vacation. They actually get rewarded in many cases, if you want to look at it. If they get a, a, a few days off and get an unpaid leave, or even if in some cases a paid leave while this is being investigated, and then they're reinstated. Even in situations where the police chief wants to get rid of the officer because of the brutality, he is opposed by the unions, and the officer is kept on. We've got a case coming out of Oregon that was written up by Don Salazar yesterday. Oregon State Police, taser autistic child found wandering naked. He says in this article, when police found a confused and naked 11-year-old girl wandering a stretch of highway along the I-5 corridor in Oregon, they didn't exactly offer her a ride home. Instead, the responding officer determined the best course of action would be to taser her. Now, what was happening was a cab driver, Adam Bednar, came across this young girl walking down the highway confused. She was nude and threw him a smile indicating she wasn't fully aware of where she was or what she was doing. He said he thought she was drugged in some way, thought she might be on bath salts or meth or something like that. So he drove alongside her while he called the police. The trooper that arrived called for her to stop and when she didn't obey the cop, he threatened to tase her and he did. And we have a report from a local news station here that uh, let's go ahead and throw to that report and see what uh, they, they actually talked to some witnesses there at that report. The young woman seen walking confused and naked right here near a milepost 18 on I-5 is a juvenile. And because of that, state police aren't releasing her name or the exact details around her condition. But one eyewitness says the situation was like nothing he had ever seen. That was about it. it was a sight Adam Bednar says he wishes he could forget. I don't know how to describe it, really. It was just shocking. That was all. You know, I couldn't believe that it was happening. OSP officials describe a young girl, unresponsive and confused, wandering naked along the highway. It was Adam that first found her there. I stopped the car in the middle of the freeway. I backed up. And she she kind of looked in my window. She kind of laughed and kept on walking. Adam drove alongside her while he called police. He says the trooper who arrived called for her to stop and threatened twice to tase her. After giving no response, two little red dots appeared on her back, then metal barbs. She seized up and she just fell face first on the ground. Just face first on the ground. OSP officials say it was necessary to prevent her from wandering further into the road and putting herself in danger. Adam, who helps troopers apprehend the girl in the hood of his car, says he isn't so sure. She wasn't going off the road. She was set on walking down the freeway. And I think that should, had she waited for backup, they probably could have got her without the taser. As for the reasons for her behavior, state police say she likely has autism. Adam says whatever it was, it was baffling. I thought she was drugged. I thought she was on, you know, maybe bath salts, too much meth, something. What is certain is that the young girl was not the victim of a crime, and she is reportedly safe with her family. But Adam says he isn't about to forget this case anytime soon. Wow, the most, the craziest experience of my life. State police say the young woman in this case won't be charged with any crimes because she wasn't aware of her surroundings. They say the use of force is done at an officer's discretion, but they will be reviewing it to make sure it meets their policies. In Ashland, Justin Bork, Newswatch 12. That's just amazing. I have an 11-year-old daughter, and don't tell me that a cop couldn't control an 11-year-old girl without tasering her. That is the most cowardly, disgusting thing 
I've ever heard that someone would do that to an 11 year old girl. Don't they have any capability of, of handling these situations? I mean, the whole idea of having a taser is that they're not exposing themselves to undue risk. Do they really feel like that 11 year old girl presents a threat to the officer that he needs to use that? The fact that it's non-lethal force doesn't really mean anything. You've had people die from being tasered. You have people seriously injured from being tasered. As he said, she fell face forward when he tasered her. I just don't understand how the government allows police officers to get away with this time and time again. And when they do, it just makes them worse the next time. We've got on the phone here the father of the young girl who was tasered. And uh, we want to ask him a few questions and get his comments on that. As a father, I'm absolutely outraged about that. Hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Uh, I don't want to use your name without any permission. Well, they've got it in there. that You wanted to uh, put your name up there, but um, that's fine. Tell us a little bit about this from your perspective. Well, basically, um, we got a call at 6, uh, a little before 6 in the morning um, from the Oregon State Police that they had my daughter. Um, we have our house very well secured, but she's clever. Even though she doesn't talk, she's she's very clever, very perceptive, and uh, she managed to unscrew the security mechanism we had on the window. And uh, they call them runners. There's a lot of autistic children that have this characteristic. They mm-hmm. like to, once they get out, they just run. Uh, in whatever direction they want to go. She loves cars, and where are the most cars? On the freeway. She doesn't understand the danger. Um, she doesn't understand any of that. Um, but she got out, um, and uh, we got a call at 6 in the morning, said they had my daughter. And I was grateful that uh, they brought her back safe. Of course, as a parent, you've got to be grateful for that, that you, they bring your daughter back safe. But... Later developments, I hear that they had to taser her in order to bring her in. And it would seem that a naked, handicapped female wandering down the freeway, tasers would not be necessary in order to apprehend a child. I mean, tasers are dangerous. They can cause yeah. fatalities. Oh, um, absolutely. Do you, do you find your daughter physically uh, threatening or intimidating when you are uh, around her? Or other people find her very large and, and scary that uh, you feel like the police would be justified in terms of tasering her? Not at all. No. I mean, she, she is physically fit, but she certainly is not threatening. She's sure. very gentle. She giggles. I'm sure when she was wandering down the freeway, she thought this was the greatest thing in the world. She was probably happy just cruising down the freeway. I mean, I know how she is when she gets out. She just thinks it's the greatest thing. She's happy. And the police have this way of always escalating the situation. Yep. They don't try to uh, bring the situation down and apprehend a suspect in a diplomatic manner. They do it by escalating uh, the situation. Well, they pull up and they start making demands. Right. First thing they do is say, do this, do that. If you don't do that, then I'm going to tase you if you don't do what I say. And then they right. go ahead and tase people. They don't try to assess the situation. They don't try, as you said, to de-escalate the situation or really even try to ascertain what's going on. We had a situation here in Austin where there was a car accident, and the fellow that was involved in the car accident, I believe it was diabetes, but it was some kind of a physical condition where he was essentially unable to talk. And wow. the cop came up and started telling him to get out of the car and do this or that, and the guy just sat there, wouldn't talk to the car, uh, to the cop, and he started to th- threaten him with a taser, and then eventually tasered this guy who was physically unable to respond to him. So the, the question is, at this point, I guess, uh, have you heard anything from the police department other than it's up to the officer's discretion as to how and when he uses force? Well, uh, it's just the basic generic statements that they uh, had to uh, taser her to save her life um, from running into traffic. But I have a tip recording from the witness, the taxi driver, that said that was absolutely not the case, that the police were lying, in fact that she was not in any danger. They had her cornered. The traffic was completely stopped. There was no need to taser whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I can play that audio. I I, I did interview the guy this morning. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear that. Let's let's play that. That's uh, audio that you interviewed the taxi driver who was the eyewitness to this? Yeah, Adam. Okay. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, The officers are lying. They're lying out their teeth. 
the girl was not in danger of being run over. I had all the traffic stopped. The officer had the traffic stopped. We need to pursue this. Okay. Um, we need to be held accountable. <coughs> And then we talked for a good 45 minutes, and he uh, detailed the whole uh, situation. They had traffic stopped. There was no uh, danger that she was in. There was no danger. The freeway traffic was completely stopped. And obviously, my daughter, was she's not an aggressive type. She doesn't attack people. She was just intent on cruising down the road and doing her thing. That's kind of how these right. autistic kids do their thing. They put their sight on a direction, and they go. Right. Well, I guess the question, though, is that they, they are using these tasers almost like whips. Do what right. I say or I'm going to electronically whip you. Right. What do you think is the answer to this as a parent? What would you like to see happen? Well, in this circumstance, what I would like to have seen happen is the officer or whoever to walk up, grab her by the hand and say, come on, sweetie, get in the car. She's very cooperative in that respect. She loves cars. She always, I mean, she hops in a stranger's cars just out of nowhere if someone... Is nice to her. I mean, she she's obsessed with cars and going places. So she sees the freeway as a place to go places. I mean, she doesn't understand um, these things at all. Absolutely. Um, it's perfectly easy to determine that the situation is a handicap shop. To walk up, grab her by the hand, say, come on, sweetie, let's get in the car. Um, and you'd think it was actually a female officer. It was not a male officer. It was a female officer. Um, well, I would think even a female officer wouldn't be physically afraid of an 11-year-old girl that's not acting aggressively. As like you said, she's just walking along the side of the highway. Well, what's there to be afraid of if you're an armed, trained officer? Exactly. exactly. No traffic coming. And here's a naked little girl. What, what's there to be afraid of? I mean, either she's, I mean, they have to apprehend uh, defensive and offensive male and female subjects all the time that might be armed and might do this. It seems obvious that with a naked child, it would be pretty easy to apprehend and get the yeah. child to a safe area. Without you, you, can't make the, you can't make the case that maybe she's got some kind of a concealed weapon. You know, even though we're talking about an 11-year-old child, I mean, the typical excuses that these people have are, well, I thought they had a weapon or they pulled a weapon. You can see that the child's got nothing at all. Like you said, totally naked, empty-handed, walking alongside the road, an 11-year-old girl, and it's necessary to just taser her because she's not following the orders of her lords and masters in uniform. Right, and she wasn't pursuing the officer. She was still doing a thing, wandering down the freeway. They had traffic completely stopped by the witness uh, account, and they shot her in the back. Mm. Not in the front. She wasn't approaching them. She wasn't weaving into traffic or anything. They had traffic completely stopped. So they use the taser now as a first means of apprehending suspects. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be basically a barrier between having to shoot or use lethal force. That's right. But now it's just a way of apprehending anybody. It's become so common. We get these stories all the time because it's a story that we're concerned about here at InfoWars. We're concerned about civil liberties. We're concerned about an out-of-control government. So people send us these stories all the time. We see so much of this, and there's no concern about the use of tasers. It's just random procedure. And as you said, it's become the first thing they do. They don't even stop and think about it. I think what's needed at the local level is we've got to have some politicians who are going to say... Every time they do this, it's going to be treated as if it was a shooting. There's going to be an investigation. And I think there needs to be an investigation when the police use force, even non-lethal force. There needs to be an investigation as to whether or not that force is warranted or not. And I think that investigation needs to be done by a group of citizens, not internally, not having the foxes guarding the chicken house, so to speak. They're, they're not going to police themselves, basically. We have to know who, who's going to police the police, who's going to watch the watchers. That's always the question in a society that wants to remain free. And if we don't have the answer to that question, we're not going to remain free. Well, also, uh, you have to kind of recognize that in order to apprehend a suspect, you have to assault them. You have to commit a crime in order to apprehend somebody. I mean, th that's an assault, blatant assault on a child in order to apprehend them. If anybody did that in a different situation, they would be charged with assault. So the government has this means of creating legislation in order to monopolize that they're the only ones that can get away with assaulting people. The police can get away with tasing, shooting, and beating people up in order to apprehend them. And a lot of them aren't even guilty of a crime, they're just suspected of one. So government has this nature of creating legislation so they're the only ones that can get away with committing 
the acts of assault or whatever. And then it's perfectly acceptable for the government to do it. And it's, and it's very instructive, too, when we look at the gun control debate. What they're talking about is essentially giving the government a monopoly on the use of force. Mm -hmm. And as you're just talking about, when they have that kind of monopoly, like in a situation where they walk up and there's an unarmed 11-year-old girl, how do they respond? And this is not an isolated case. This is a pattern of behavior that we see over and over again. If you want to know what's going to happen when only the police have guns, when only the criminals have guns, then take a look at Mexico, take a look at Chicago. These are not the kind of people that we can trust with a monopoly on force. There has to be some oversight, and there has to be essentially a deterrent, knowing that other people have arms, I think. But it, it's, it's something that's very disturbing to see that they can do whatever they please. There's never any accountability. There's never any guidelines for the use of tasers. I don't know of any guidelines for the use of tasers. It always seems to be at the discretion of the police force in every location I've looked at. Well, journalism, I mean, is supposed to be kind of the uh, countermeasure towards government getting away with whatever they want. But what happens is journalism and the network media get in kind of, uh, forget the term, but in an incestuous relationship um, to where the media needs the government and the government needs the media. They're, the media isn't serving us necessarily. Oh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. serving themselves. Oh, and absolutely. The media has been consolidated down to about five big companies. Yeah. And they basically, whether you're talking about local issues or whether you're talking about big national issues of civil liberties, it's they take the government side. They're the government's mouthpiece. They make the excuses for the government. Right. And so it, it becomes a, a single kind of organism, if you will, um, that really doesn't have our interests in mind as far as citizenry. They have their own interests in mind. And the media needs the government and the government needs the media. It becomes one kind of thing. And uh, it certainly doesn't have the citizenry's interest in mind. And what confines the government? The Constitution. So wouldn't the government have the most interest in dismantling what confines it? I mean, and they've been systematically doing it over the years, uh, case by case and incident by incident. They'll use whatever they can to uh, dismantle various rights systematically over the years. So basically, and we that's that's exactly what whistleblower Drake said. And I say whistleblower Drake said he said after 9-11, the government took off the chains of the Constitution. We had Patrick Henry say bind them down with the chains of the Constitution. Well, they've cut those chains now and they're pretty much doing anything that they want to. Visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.